commentary. Enlightenment flower summary self mastery king first come one told the worthy Brahman woman. After you make your offerings, return home quickly, because you have hurt yourself badly due to the fall. What should you do once you get home? Sit upright, even though you broke your arms and legs, and concentrate on my name, enlightenment, flower samadhi, self mastery, king, first come one. You will soon know where your mother has been reborn. The Brahman woman bowed to the Buddha and returned home. The memory of her mother sustained her, since she was so sincere in thinking about her mother, as she sat upright, recollecting enlightenment, flower, samadhi, self, mastery, king, first come one. She sat up so straight. She forgot her pain and her broken arms and legs. After doing so for a day and night, she was not kneeling. She sat for 24 hours, simply reciting the Buddha's name and nothing else. At that time, she suddenly saw herself beside a sea. This was not a dream. This was a result of her utmost sincerity. Her spiritual nature, her consciousness, or her soul. In general, all these terms are one. The spiritual nature is the eighth consciousness in the individual since the Brahman woman sat for a long time. She forgot her pain and stopped everything except that one thought of the Buddha. Sincere in this thought, the eighth consciousness left her body. She suddenly saw herself by a sea. A meditator may see certain states because the eighth consciousness leaves the body. If your five eyes are open, you will see ghosts, spirits, bodhisattvas, and buddhas. You will not otherwise. Cultivators, spiritual nature, eighth, eighth consciousness contains the five eyes within. If the spiritual nature leaves the physical body, the five eyes are open so that they can see different states. This holy Brahman woman must have cultivated for a long time because even though the five eyes on her physical body did not open, her eighth consciousness left the body so that she can all of a sudden see herself by the sea whose waters seethed and bubbled. This sea water is not cold but boiling hot, surging upwards. How many evil beasts are in this ocean? Never mind with that, just know that there are many and not few. With solid iron bodies, these evil beasts flew swiftly back and forth above this sea, chasing one another. She saw billions of men and women bobbing up and down in the sea, being fought over, sensed, and eaten by the evil beasts. What do these evil beasts do? They eat these men and women, such as swallowing one man or one woman in one mouth full. These most ferocious evil beasts have big mouths and big stomachs. She saw young shards or speedy ghosts that fly and run swiftly with different shapes. What do they look like? Some had many hands, some many eyes, some many legs, some many heads. One Yaksha ghost may have several dozen arms, one extremely ugly and vicious Yaksha ghost may have two arms but many eyes, one may have relatively few arms and eyes but many legs and feet, one Yaksha ghost may have many hands whose mouths open up like a top that can swallow several people with one gulp. Its teeth are like swords and knives, with their sharp fangs that slice as quickly as swords. They drove the offenders on toward the evil beasts. What do Yaksha ghosts do? The evil beasts look for things to eat. Since people are smarter, they sometimes run far away from evil beasts. Escaping though, they run straight into a Yaksha ghost who blocks you so that you have nowhere to run and you have 
you are chased by enemies from behind. You have no route of escape and nowhere to go. You cannot even go and spend the night at a friend's house. Sutra. All the Yakshas themselves said the offenders and twisted their heads and feet together into shapes so horrible that no one would dare even look at them for long. During that time, the Brahman woman was naturally without fear due to the power of recollecting the Buddha. A ghost king named Poisonless bowed his head in greeting and said to the worthy woman, Welcome, O Bodhisattva. What conditions bring you here? The Brahman woman asked the ghost king, What is this place? Poisonless replied, We are on the western side of the great iron ring mountain, and this is the first of the seas that encircle it. The worthy woman said, I have heard that the hells are within the iron ring. Is that actually so? Poisonless answered, Yes, the hells are here. The worthy woman asked, How have I now come to the hells? Poisonless answered, If it wasn't awesome spiritual strength that brought you here, then it was the power of karma. Those are the only two ways that anyone gets here. The worthy woman asked, Why is this water seething and bubbling, and why are there so many offenders and evil beasts? Poisonless replied, These are beings of Jambuvipa who did evil deeds. They have just died and passed through 49 days without any surviving relatives doing any meritorious deeds on their behalf to rescue them from their distress. Besides that, during their lives they themselves didn't plant any good causes. Now their own karma calls forth this house. Their first task is to cross this sea. Commentary or all the yaksha and evil beasts themselves said the offenders they beat and sense as if eagles catching chickens with their claws these evil beasts and yakshas cooperate and capture the offenders and twist their heads and feet together yakshas may do this to evil beasts evil beasts may do this to yakshas and evil beasts and yashas may do this to people. In general, all of them can be twisted. So they look really awful. They are twisted into millions of different kinds of shapes, so horrible that typically no one would dare even look at them for long. During that time, the Brahman woman was naturally without fear due to the power of recollecting the Buddha. Enlightenment Flower Samadhi Self Mastery King First Come One A Ghost King, one of the leaders among the ghosts named Poisonless, bowed his head in greeting to the Brahman woman and said to the worthy woman, Welcome, O cat-hearted Bodhisattva. What conditions bring you here? The Brahman woman asked the ghost king, What is this place? I don't know how I got there here either. Poisonless replied, We are on the western side of the great iron ring mountain, and this is the first of the seas on the west side that encircle it. The worthy woman said to the ghost king, I have heard that the hells are within the iron ring. Is that actually so? Is, the, is there really the hells? How come people do not believe there are the hells? Poisonless answered, Yes, the hells are here. The hells really do exist. It is not imagined. The worthy woman asked, How have I now come to the hells? Firstly, the ghost king answered, If it was an awesome spiritual strength that brought you here, then it was the power of karma. You can come here due to two factors. One, you have the awesomeness the spiritual power or the virtue. Two, you fall into the hells because of the power of your offense karma. Those are the only two ways that any 
one guess here. If it was not for one of two things, one's awesomeness or karma, one will not come to the house. The worthy Brahman woman asked, Why is this water safe thing and bubbling? And why are there so many offenders cooking in this boiling water and so many evil beasts? Poison least replied the Brahman woman. These are beings of Jambu Fripa, which means victorious gold for the reason that leaves on the Jambu Nadasuvana trees fall into the house and turn into gold. This kind of gold is most supreme and special. So it is called victorious gold. Our world is in southern Jambu Fripa. Beings in southern Jambu Fripa who, by merely stirring a thought, did evil deeds, they have just cried and passed through 49 days, 7 weeks. To help a, death, a deceased individual, we must do some merit for him within 49 days after his death so that he may benefit. During that period of time, the offense karma of the deceased has not been confirmed yet, but after 49 days, their karma is determined the way the court decisions have been made. They cannot change anymore. If we were to recite sutras or mantras for the deceased, you can, we can save them so that they reap the benefits. After 49 days, the offense of the deceased is judged, so there is still merit from recitation of sutras, but they get very little merit, the impact of which is tiny, though not completely nil. Without any surviving relatives doing any meritorious deeds on their behalf to rescue them from their distress, to save evil-doing living beings from their suffering, Besides that, during their lives, they themselves didn't plant any good causes, didn't do good deeds. Now their old karma calls forth this house. Their first task is to cross this sea. Naturally, they must first go to this great sea of suffering to endure the karmic retribution they deserve. Sutra 10,000 Juranas east of this sea is another sea in which they will undergo twice as much suffering. East of that sea is yet another sea where the sufferings are double yet again. What the combined evil causes of the three comic vehicles evoke is called the Sea of Karma. This is that place. Commentary 10,000 Juranas east of this sea is another sea in which they will undergo twice as much suffering. The suffering in the other sea is more much severe than this one. See how people are suffering as the evil beasts and yashas chase them about in this ocean. Were you to see the other sea, you would know that the suffering there is manifold compared to this one. East of that sea is yes, another sea where the sufferings are doubled yet again. The suffering there is much more than the previous sea. What is the reason for the existence of these oceans? What the combined evil causes of the three karmic vehicles evoke? The three karmas are the karma of body, the karma of mouth, and the karma of mind. There are three evils to body which are Killing, stealing, sexual misconduct. There are three evils of the mind, then greed, hatred, and delusion. There are four evils to the mouth. They are frivolous speech, false speech, harsh speech, and the deceived speech. Frivolous speech consists of improper words between men and women. False speech refers to exaggerations and lies. Harsh speech means scolding people. Divisive speech means telling A about B's phones and telling B about A's phones. One says two different things. 
there are four evils to the mouth plus three evils of the body and three evils of the mind making a total of ten evils these ten evils are also called the evil causes of the three commas this is to creating evil how come there is this type of ocean with evil waters with so many evil beasts and yakshas they come forth because of people's evil causes plant good causes and reap good fruits plant evil causes and reap evil fruits people deserve that they get since they create their own offense karma it's called the sea of karma the three oceans together make up the sea of karma which are all created by the power of people's karma this is that place the sea of karma sutra the worthy woman asked the ghost king poison Lis, where are the hells poison Lis answered within the three seas are hundreds of thousands of hells each one different eighteen of those are known as the great house. Five hundred subsequent ones inflict illimitless cruel sufferings. Following those, are hundreds of thousands that inflict limitless further sufferings. The worthy woman again uh, questioned the great ghost king. My mother died recently, and I do not know where she has gone. Commentary: The worthy Brahman woman asked the ghost king poisonless. Where are the hells? Ghost King personally answered the Brahman woman. Within the three seas are hundreds of thousands of hells. What is the sea of suffering? The sea of suffering is a conglomeration of living beings, karma. Ocean is symbolic of a large number. There is not an ocean necessarily. It represents the accumulation of karma that is as limitless as the great sea. These three seas are created by people's three commas of body, mouth, and mind. So presently told the Brahman woman that within the three seas are the great house. Each one of the house is different, replete with its unique setup. In other words, each person experiences a unique hell based on his karma. Hells are not existent and prepared before people passed away. The hells manifest based on each individual's karma. Each experiences retribution based on his or her offense karma. For instance, there is a hell of molten copper. Piles of molten copper are hollow except for a blazing fire inside. What kind of individual falls into the hells? Licentious individuals. The power of karma makes these individuals see molten copper in the shape of people. Lusty men see molten copper and think it is a beautiful woman. As he runs forward to embrace the beautiful woman, he is scorched through the skin and flesh that he is stuck. Lusty women see molten copper as an extremely handsome man or an old friend. She wants to get close without regard for anything, but when she does get close, she gets burned to death by the fire of desire. After being burned to death, a clever, uh, clever wind in the house that was mysteriously created revives the being in the house so that he or she experiences the same retribution repeatedly though he or she has forgotten the results and only remembers the benefits. He or she makes the same mistake and suffers the retribution there. This is how the molten copper hell works. There are many different kinds of hells each with each unique features. Eighteen of those are known as the great hells. Each hell has eighteen separate spots. 500 subsequent ones inflict in limitless cruel suffering. Following those are hundreds of thousands that inflict limitless further sufferings. The worthy woman again questioned the great ghost king. Oh, big brother ghost king, please instruct me out of compassion. 
My mother died recently, and I do not know where she has gone. I do not know where my mother's soul went. Big brother, God's king, please be kind and tell me.